Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we will be looking at Open API and Swagger definition. How we can implement a Swagger documentation and generate uh, files like Angular files or any other files for the front end using a Micronaut application. If you like my content, please hit and like subscribe to my channel. So let's get started. Let's see why we need a Swagger. Swagger is a documentation. It uses OpenAPI 3.0 in the backend and we will use a Swagger API and Swagger UI to show the REST endpoint as a documentation. Now documentation is really important if you are creating a web API, REST API, because other developer, if you are consuming your API, they need to know all the input and outputs from the REST API. So instead of creating manually a documentation, we can use a Swagger to generate all the documentation for us. So that's the use case of Swagger. Now to implement the Swagger in Micronaut applications, it's very easy. Micronaut has inbuilt support for Swagger. So if you go to Micronaut applications and a launch, over here, we can see the launch applications, how we can generate a Swagger and implement it. So over here, if you select Java 17 or any version of you, or over here in the feature, I will just search for Swagger. So if I can see Open API and Swagger UI. So to implement a Swagger documentation on Micronaut, we need to add these two dependencies. So if we add these dependencies and we can preview on build.gradle, we can see over here, the annotation process for OpenAPI has been added and our implementation of Swagger v3 annotations has been introduced. Now in Micronaut, Swagger can generate a documentation based on your Java uh, comments or if you want to get want to get more interpretations and more definitions of Swagger we need to use Swagger annotations this gives us more flexibility than compared to the Java comments but however if you don't use this one Swagger also does create a documentation based on the Java annotations you have used. So these two libraries are needed to create our documentations. Now, Micronaut is a AOT frameworks. So your uh, documentations and all those YAML files will be created at the build time. So when you build an application, we can see uh, a YAML file has been created on our build. Now, this is the way how we add those two reference to create the Swagger. Now, I have already a project that's been using a Swagger um, on this project. So, just see over here, I have a Open API annotation process dependency and a Swagger uh, annotation process dependency over here. So this is the same project that has been created using the reference files and I'm imported over here because I have uh, used in an API gateway service because Micronaut has a uh, HTTP client supported. So if you don't want to use cloud provider API gateways and if you want to create your own, you can use Micronaut HTTP client for that. It's very good. So I am using that one and I'm creating my own API service. So over here, if I see, if I add a Swagger annotations and all those and a annotation process, by default, the Micronaut generate this one. But for these, uh, because I have a single sign on, when I run the applications, I will show you. And these are some of the authorizations for the single sign on and token URL, refresh scopes, these are all in my local systems right now. So these are the Swagger annotations that has been uh, implemented when you use those dependencies. If we check this one, it comes from the library 
of Swagger IO annotations, which is inside this jar. This is on the top level of where my application runs, but I will show you in one of the controllers. So I have lots of controllers, so just I will show you in one of the controllers. In my controller, I have a, another library that has a reference on this project. So I have defined all my controller endpoints on I category operations. So if I see over here, this comes from the another library that is the reference over here. So I have written all Swagger annotations over here, like operations. Uh, this is search category by ID, description summary, and what response it gives us. Response side 200 list of categories. And it has, these are all Swagger annotations. If you go to micro not Swagger project. you can find all the things over here for the reference. So I just reference over here and did all the things. They are all well documented over here. Now, when you create an application with Micronaut, there are two options Micronaut gives you uh, to configure the Swagger uh, configurations. One is open api properties so in open api properties you can all define everything over here or you can either do it in a system level so for, for here i'm using a theme as material angular material and i am telling you to create a swagger ui as well so this uh, you can do in two ways either from the system properties like open API either properties files or either you can do it from the system level. Now, if you are using a security, uh, you need to allow Swagger to have access to some of the uh, like URLs. So in my case, I have a security JWT enabled. So in my case, I have to write these things. And don't worry, these are all in Micronaut uh, documentation. If you refer over there, you will find all these configurations over there. But this is for the security. But if you are not using a security, you don't need to specify actually this one. But you, however, need to specify this one. So these are the configurations that needed for a Swagger to implement in Micronaut. That's it. There is no other things. So if I run the application, so it runs very fast. So it's already been run on my system. So if I open uh, 8080 localhost 8080, so I have a Swagger UI because I need to access Swagger UI. So it's something called Swagger UI and index.html. This is the URL from where we access the Swagger. So if I do this one, so these are the endpoints that has been generated for us using a Swagger. So it has all the schemas as well. So each endpoints might need a schema payload and all the endpoint definitions and schemas are also over here. You can also do an authorizations if you are using some API keys or passwords, all those configurations are also can be done, but this is done again from here. So if you have checked this one, so I have a security schema I written something over here. So we can change, in my case, I'm doing an auth flow that's why I have, but you might have a different uh, type of security, so it might change. But these are all listed in that same uh, documentation. So if we click on this authorization, it will go into this authorization server and it will do a single sign on and it will redirect back you to this one but i'm not running at this localhost currently but uh, in this will work definitely if you do set up and run you can do with any other octa 
or OAuth or any other third parties uh, single sign-on provider. So this is the documentation and so over here if you see this is the YAML file that has been created by Micronaut to use this swagger. So you can we can also access that YAML file over here. So it's, if you do at at, so this is the YAML file that has been created. So if you want to check where that ML file has been created, it's always in over here. If I enable so excluded file, build, if you go to class, main, meta info, and swagger. And we can see this one. This is the YAML file that is been accessed over there. So, so I'll show you if I, I can delete this one and recreate it again in the build time. So if I delete the build file and I stop this execution and if I, if I do build project, so over here, so build files has been generated. So if I check again the swagger, this ML file has been generated in the build time. So you can directly run and access this. Now the next part is if you are using a front-end application and you are consuming this API and what object is been sent to the backend and if you don't want to write again all those classes and interfaces, you can also generate uh, models from this YAML file. So for that, we have uh, another project in Micron in Swagger actually. Uh, so if you check the GitHub of Swagger API, there is a Swagger code gen project for that one. So if you check this one, this has TypeScript and Java. You can generate everything like even uh, for other Ruby.net or any other languages that you can also generate. So these are the documentation over here. The latest table is 3.0.24. It has Maven as well as Cradle support, but you need a Java 8 plus runtime on your machine. So there are different ways you can configure this one. Either you can directly install that jar using the Homebrew if you are on Mac, or if you are Windows, you can download it. So, or if you are doing something on container, so you also have a Docker setup for this one. But in my case, I have downloaded the jar. So let me show you the front end. So in the previous videos, we have done a micro front end with application. And in the micro front end applications, if you give discount, I have order and product as well as host and home application. So this is the micro front end application and it's written in Angular. So inside a tool, when you create a micro front end application using NX, this is the for a folder structure you will get with NX. So one of the folder will be tools. And inside the tools, I have just download Swagger Codes and CLI 3.0.24.jar and paste it over here because I am generating our TypeScript Angular files using this jar in the front end. So inside the libs, if you see service, and this is the folder you will get by default when you generate an application using uh, NX. So let's see the code because I already have a code and if you want a reference how I got that code. So in this documentation, so I have just copied this code and modified some of the things. So on Swagger code gen GitHub, you can just copy. And this is a Java based application. So that's why you need to run a jar. That's why Java dash jar. So let's open the terminal. So let's me bring before I run this one. So inside API, let me delete these files as well, even models, because I have previously generated the file, that's why I can see 
those folders inside. So you need to specify where you want to generate all the files. So I have created one of the folders inside lips so I've got a specification. So this is the folder to where I want to generate. So if I go back to my terminal, so let me zoom this bit a bit. So I already have that command that copy and paste it from there. So <coughs> Java dash star so tools swagger gen CLI jar and this is the jar that's been pointing to my application. So I am inside project sample project UI. If you check, so this is the Fetibird UI and in the tools I have this jar swagger code gen CLI 3034.jar. So this is the reference to that jar, where that jar is located. And you have a command to generate. So this I is I is where from where you want to generate. Because my backend application is running on this URL ATAT. So if you go back to IntelliJ and if I run this one, so my application is run and let's copy this one. So if we go back to browser, so this is the YAML file definition that Swagger and my have generated. So from here, we will generate all the models and APIs in that required in the front end. So that is the one and L is the language for which language we want to generate. Uh, I am generating TypeScript for Angular. So this can be Ruby, Scala, .NET, Java itself, or any other PHP, or any other language that you are using. And this O is the output directory where you want to put all the files. So I have lit services, source, lit swagger specification. So this is the file uh, in that. So lit service, source lips swagger specification so this is the folder where i want to generate all the files and if you want to generate just a model and if you want don't want to generate a model documentation and then don't want to run any test you can specify this one and these are optional it's not mandatory so this one that's see is the options that you want to give for to generate like angular swagger option dot json this is one of the file inside the tools directory so if you check the tools directory again so this is the file angular swagger option dot json so i am using n0 version 14 other file that's what is pointing to so if i generate this file and if we go back to that folder lip service src lips or definition i can see all the models that is been used in the front end uh, because you don't want to generate again the model in the front end manually because if you use this model if someone changes in the back end this model will get changed and if you have some errors you can detect in the front end so this is the model that has been generated for us and this is the api that is been done. So you can use this API or you can write your own, but if you don't want to generate the API, that option is also there in the generator. So this is the video, how we can use Swagger and how we can use the Swagger specification that can be needed in the front end.